And mama, has Plasma ever seen a goth? Girl, this ain't goth. All in all, I would change the whole thing. Hello, my beautiful light brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 16, Episode 9, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And stay tuned to the end to find out who had the best and worst looks of the week. This week, the queens are challenged with yet another design challenge. That is right, this is the third design challenge on this season of RuPaul's Drag Race, and we literally haven't seen this since season three. This week, the queens have 24 hours to construct a goth-inspired look. That is right, we are going spooky ooky dooky with it, and some queens had a fab of a time, and other ones were struggling. So let's find out who rides to the occasion and who plummeted to their death. This week's theme is See You Next Wednesday, where the queens must give us their best goth-inspired spooky looks on the runway. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up, it's Plain Jane, and Plain Jane is coming out in this a black little top with these black bottoms, and she's got it encrusted in chains. She's also decided to rip the fabric and give you this more dangling moment as she comes down the runway. She's paired it with thigh-high black boots, black hair, and black makeup. Oh my gosh, straight off the bat, this is such a strong start. I love that this more punk edge that she's going with it. It's definitely giving you more of like that biker gang feeling. Now, I don't know if this is necessarily goth, but I think this is gonna be a common theme throughout this whole episode, where I don't think any of them are really goth. They're just playing with black fabric. But Plain Jane, what I like is that she's integrated these silver chains into it. So it definitely gives you movement, it gives you texture, and it definitely gives you something, some light reflectiveness in it. So it doesn't feel all one note. The dangling pieces that are all over the place um, definitely add that little bit of drama, that little bit of extra, that little bit of movement, so it doesn't feel so stiff on the runway. She then paired it with her signature mug and beautiful hair to really make the whole thing feel elevated. This goes to show you that even if you have a simple outfit, the way you do your makeup, the way you style it, really goes a long way. And Plain Jane is really good at putting a concept together. It might be far-fetched, it might be off the theme, but she knows how to do it. She did it in the last sewing challenge and she's doing it again on this sewing challenge. All in all, I love this look and I kind of want to make a version of it myself. I'm very much a chain punky gal, um, so this is right up my alley. All in all, this is fantastic and Plain Jane is definitely going to get a bow. Next up, it's Maya Iman LePage and Maya Iman LePage is coming out in these black latex-esque uh, dress with a mermaid bottom. She's paired with black hair and she's got little ravens on her shoulders and little spiders on her leg. She is definitely giving you that more Morticia Adams feel for the look and honestly I'm surprised that Maya was able to pull this off because although this is ultimately a quite very simple dress, it is well done. And Maya has had some questionable tastes on the season and she was able to bring those from home. So the fact that she turned this off in 24 hours is amazing because I actually think this is one of Maya's better looks. What I love is that Maya is also playing with textures. On the front, she's got one material, but when she turns to the back, it's got more of like this lacy material that kind of sparkles. And I love that. That being said, there are a few things I would change. She decided to go with long black hair, which I don't think was the right move. I think that she was definitely going for that Morticia Adams, hence the long black hair. But because she's not showing any skin and she's got a darker complexion, it's all starting to blend in together. I wish if she did black hair, it would have been an updo so that you could have really given some space around the face. Or I would say, why not go with a red or a little pop of color just to give you that more like devilish uh, look to it. I think that would have also looked really good. I think the other thing that would have really helped is if she did a more of a v-neck neckline so you would have saw more skin so again would have 
uh, framed her face a little bit better. So she could have done different hair or cut or actually probably a little bit of both. And then it would have really taken it up the next level. I also wish that she would have taken some of that fabric on the back, which is so beautiful and maybe done it on the front. I think that would have just given you that little bit of extra texture that was needed. Ultimately, this isn't that bad of an outfit. Had this been earlier in the season or had it been on another franchise of Drag Race, I probably would have fabbed it. But with all the looks that are being showcased on the runway this week it just doesn't measure up to everybody else and because it doesn't measure up i'm gonna have to go with a drab <laughs> next up it's dawn and dawn is coming out in this sort of little black bodysuit with this big hoop skirt she's got her little elf ears and this big black feathers coming off of her head matched with this silver hair oh my god this is so Great. I love that Dawn played with a lot of different textures in it. She's got the hoop skirt. She's got the feathers in her hair. She's got a mat. She's got a leather. It's got all of the textures. And that's really what you need when you're playing with only one color because or else it can feel very monotone and one note. And Dawn definitely made sure that wasn't the case. Dawn also was really smart because she just said, you know what, even though it's one color, I'm going to go for the drama and give you that aha showcase moment that you need on the runway. And so therefore she has this flow skirt which I think is so genius because it gives you movement it gives you shape and she's also got extra height by these extra long headpiece feather things that are coming off of her head which also give you dimensionality the other thing that is really perfect is she's paired it with a gray hair so actually all of the pieces that are on her hair really stand out and give you more of a moment this is what I'm talking about about pairing different color hair even though it is a goth theme this is exactly how you should do it all in all it works for me it feels like dawn but it feels like fashion and i'm shocked that she's able to make this in 24 hours because mama i could never all in all this is fantastic and definitely getting a bow. Next up, it's Morphine Love Dion, and Morphine Love Dion is coming out in this mermaid-style velvet dress with these pieces stuck on her body to give you a little bit of dimensionality. She decided to paint her face white to give you that little ooky spooky edge and paired it with black hair. She said she's doing a little bit of Morticia Adams, a little bit of Elvira, and a little bit of Latina flair. Now, those are not necessarily the references I would have went with. I definitely saw more Bratz Monster High doll. I thought that was the, the inspiration, but either way, she looks really good. Her mug is stamped. Morphine needs to start like giving some makeup lessons because girl, I have never seen makeup so beautiful in my life. It is so perfect, so clean, so put together, and the hair and the outfit with it matches so well. These little pieces that are on her, uh, these weird shapes, I got little like more bat wings put onto it and I thought that was really cool. It was definitely giving you that Halloween-esque vibe. And I found it very interesting that the judges didn't really love this outfit and I loved this outfit. I thought it was very unique and very well made. I thought that the concept was clean and well put together. All in all, I really don't have a lot of comments for it and I'm actually quite shocked that she was placed low. Ultimately, for me, it is definitely gonna be a bow. Next up, it's Plasma. And Plasma is coming out in these low rise pants with this houndstooth top, this little faux furry bolero jacket thing, and a long black hair. And mama, has Plasma ever seen a goth? Girl, this ain't goth. This is a whole bunch of shenanigans, honestly. This is giving me a little bit of 70s, it's giving me a little bit of 90s, it's giving me a little bit of share, it's giving me a lot of a lot of things and a lot of not goth, okay? This definitely needed some help. The only thing that is goth about this is the color palette. I think this was such a miss for, for Miss Plasma. Plasma has got this very old school character to her and I think she should have leaned into that. She could have went more in a Jinx Monsoon sort of way and done like a witchy old school take. I think that would have been super classic and super Plasma, but this feels like such a departure. It doesn't feel like Plasma and it doesn't really feel like golf either. So therefore you're really stuck in the middle. She's also made a lot of pieces and I feel like she's overcompensated by making so many pieces. I think 
she got scared that everybody else was doing dresses, so she decided to go with pants and a top. But honestly, a dress probably would have been better. On top of it, this hair. She said that she didn't have a lot of hair, and so therefore she went with her share hair. But I think this was a miss. I think she should have tried to find somebody else's hair. Definitely gone with an updo, maybe some little spikes, maybe some like shimmer. Really like try to take it up. When you are doing these design challenges, and your garment isn't good, you really have to like depend on your accessories. And the hair is like one of the biggest selling points that you have and you can really do a lot with. All in all, I would change the whole thing. And that is kind of the problem. There is not one piece, well, maybe the jacket. Maybe the jacket I would keep, but everything else needs to go. And that is why for Plasma, it is definitely gonna have to be a drab. <laughs> Next up, it's Safira Cristal, and Safira Cristal is coming out in this black and white ball gown with this black hair and holding a black bouquet. She is definitely giving you that corpse bride fantasy, or maybe she's a widow going to a funeral. I'm not quite sure, and it at least fits the theme, kind of. Safira Cristal is definitely giving you the Safira Cristal fantasy, she is giving you that ball gown, she is definitely giving you that look that works for her. She knows her body, she knows her drag, and this feels very her. The other thing that is really smart about Safira is that she decided to go with a pattern. This black and white pattern is definitely very graphic and definitely catches your attention, which means that you can do very little with it and still get a very big effect, which is I think the trick in these design challenges is to do something with a lot of nothing, you know what I mean? And she is able to fake it until she makes it. Also her selling it on the runway really helps in her storytelling and her garment. The garment itself is pretty good. Is it the most va 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 voom thing I've ever seen? No. But is it bad? No. I definitely think that other people were better than her, so I was surprised to see her so high placement, but I definitely don't think she was either bottom either. Overall, I feel like this is quite safe, but safe enough to get a soft bow. Next up, it's Nymphia Wind. Nymphia Wind is coming out in this sort of black lace attire with this giant headpiece and this veil coming over her face. She rips off her veil and she's just like shimmering down the runway. Clearly the world cannot walk in this dress because it is fitting her to the inch of her body. First things first, let's talk about this headpiece. This headpiece is everything. She said, you know what? Let me give you that drama. Let me give you that moment. Let me give you something up top, which I love because a lot of people were going down below and she decided to go up high and give you height. I think this headpiece is super cool and definitely creates that aha wow moment that you need on the runway. Once we start looking at the dress, I think the dress is also extremely well made and extremely well thought through because although she is using one color, she's using different textures that play off of each other and she's got different little cutouts to give you these little peekaboos of skin so it doesn't feel like it's swallowing her up. I think had she done them separately uh, you would have definitely seen a lot more of her. I think that the headpiece is a little bit of the star moment so you really get you don't really get to see the dress itself and for what it's worth and I do think that the veil really hindered her because it covers her face for so much of it. I can't believe I'm saying this but I think that what would have worked really well for Nymphia Wind is if she did a pop of yellow hair. I think had she done yellow hair, it would have like really focused in around her face and really made her face pop in the sea of black. And then I would have also put in that little signature Nymphia Wind color into there, which we know she loves. That being said, Nymphia Wind does look great in black and does look good in this outfit. All in all, it's very well done and she is definitely gonna get a bob. <laughs> Next up, it's Q, and Q is coming out in this big black and white dress coat with a white face and just a little piece of hair on her face. As she walks down the runway, the coat flows and you see all of the ripped fishnets underneath. I don't know if this is goth, it's definitely giving you more mime clown vibes, uh, but in like the best way possible, it is definitely giving you a little bit more of that like Cirque du Soleil avant-garde version. Definitely not goth. Uh, that being said, this coat is amazing. She's playing with a lot of different patterns, a lot of different black and white. She's got one pattern on the outside. She's got one pattern on the inside. She's got the fishnets also underneath. And she's painted her face white and is definitely giving you that oomph. 
And she's definitely giving you that moment. I also love this one piece of hair that just dangles down her face. I need one of those because sometimes I also like to do a bald look and I'm always wondering how to elevate it a little bit more and this is very inspiring on how to do it and that is why I watch Drag Race to get inspired to push my drag and this definitely does that. This of course is so immaculately made but do we expect anything else from Miss Q? Q knows how to make a garment. Honestly when she leaves the show I know she wants to become a drag queen but she should just be like the designer to all the drag queens because every single person is going to want a garment from her and she can literally do this for a living if she doesn't already. This is so cool. This is so great. This is so original. This is so over the top. This is so cute. This is so a bub. <laughs> And that is it for this week's episode. We're getting fewer queens, so these episodes are getting shorter. Now I will say for a design challenge, this was excellent. I can't believe some of these were made in 24 hours. These were some of the best looks we've had. I feel like I was dropping people just because I felt like I wanted to drop people, not because they were actually particularly bad looks. This is not Drag Race Belgique. If you want to see the train wreck that was Drag Race Belgique, click over here somewhere and go watch that video, girl. But enough about that. Let's talk about the reason why you're here. You're here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. So my drab, the worst look of the week, has to go to... Plasma. I think this is no shocker. Honestly, comparative to everybody else, it was not it. It was not goth, and it was not plasma, and it just was a mess. Honestly, ugh. But enough about the negative, let's talk about the positive. Who had my best look this week? Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week has to go to... I love this look. I know that this was not necessarily goth, but it was super cool, super original, and Q definitely knows how to make a garment and has a vision, and I feel like she deserved the win on this one, even though we had some really high ratings this week. Okay, y'all, that is it for this week's episode. Do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Well, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do read all of them and try to reply to most of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I am trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of this series and we are getting very, very close. It would really, really mean a lot to me. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.